There is a potentially major development in the upcoming U.S. presidential election, and it could lead to a big roadblock in Donald Trump's run for the White House. Right now, he won't be on the ballot in Colorado's Republican primary. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. That is Trump campaigning in Iowa last night after the Colorado Supreme Court handed down the first of its kind ruling. Polls show the former president is far and away the favorite to win the Republican presidential nomination. So for more on this story, we've reached Jill Weinbanks in Chicago. She's a former assistant Watergate special prosecutor and an MSNBC legal analyst. She's also the author of The Watergate Girl. Jill, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Arthi. Okay, so first I just want your reaction to that ruling that came from the Colorado Supreme Court. I think it is a very well-reasoned and well-written opinion and that it reaches the correct conclusion that the 14th Amendment of our Constitution bars anyone who has taken an oath to the government and then violated it by committing an act of insurrection. There was a finding by the trial court that indeed President Trump had engaged in insurrection and now the Supreme Court of Colorado has said and therefore he is barred by the 14th Amendment Section 3 from being on the ballot. We know though however that Trump was not convicted on any insurrection charges so to speak. So is this sort of maybe a little bit premature? It isn't. Um, it, because, first of all, there is nothing in the language of the amendment that requires a criminal conviction. Secondly, because in its um, original usage after the Civil War, people were not convicted but were barred. So the history of its usage by the people who passed the amendment shows that a conviction is not necessary. So neither the language nor the past usage of the amendment requires a criminal conviction. Now, we know that Trump lawyers have already promised to appeal this decision, and all eyes then are on the U.S. Supreme Court. It, as we know, has a 6-3 conservative majority, including three justices appointed by the former U.S. President Donald Trump. So how do you see all of this playing out then? Normally, I would say the Supreme Court reaches decisions based on the law and the facts, and that they would have to go along with the Supreme Court of Colorado's opinion. I am a little more concerned because the recent rulings by the Supreme Court have shown them to be politically motivated in many of them, and because one of our justices who should recuse himself because he has a clear conflict of interest. That's Justice Thomas, whose wife was engaged in the activities of January 6th, should recuse, but I doubt that he will. So I am a little concerned, but I am still very hopeful that the U.S. Supreme Court will act in accordance with the language of the amendment as it was written, by how it was used after it was written in the early days. They consider themselves textualists. And based on the text, they have no decision left but to confirm that the um, Constitution is a disqualifier for President Trump. Now, it's my understanding, because certainly we had a lot of uh, coverage uh, when initial charges came forward against the former U.S. President Donald Trump. And it was my understanding that whether you're facing charges, whether you are convicted of charges, uh, even if you are in jail, you can continue to campaign and you can also become president uh, despite those factors. So what makes this different? It's such a great question. And the truth is that a group called CRU, um, which is for the reform of ethics in government, um, realized that there was this language in the 14th Amendment and brought cases in several jurisdictions. And in Colorado, there is a specific law that allows citizens to challenge who can be on the ballot. And using that, they ended up with this decision from the Colorado Supreme Court. I think it is true if you are convicted of even horrible crimes as Donald Trump is charged with, whether it's for abuse of uh, confidential information, whether it's for violating the fraud laws of uh, New York, yes, you can be elected. In Florida, where he lives, 
he could not vote if he's convicted of a felony. But despite not being able to vote for himself, he or for any other candidate, he could serve as president. Uh, we had a candidate in the past, Eugene Debs, who was in jail while he was running. And he did get some votes, not enough to even come close, but he, he was a candidate. But this is something very different. It's like our Constitution says you have to be 35 and a natural born citizen. Those are qualifiers to even be on the ballot. So if someone turns out to have lied about their age and they're actually only 30, they would be disqualified under the laws of America. And now we know from reading the 14th Amendment that if you took an oath of office to support the Constitution and then violated that oath, you are disqualified. And so I think when we talked about you could be convicted, it is true, you can be convicted of a crime, but you can't be guilty of insurrection and still be on the ballot. So it was, uh, I know I've said he could have been, and I was just wrong because I was unaware of the language of the 14th Amendment. Now that I am, now that I've looked at its history and usage, I think he is disqualified from running for office, from holding office. Uh, so even if there's a, a write-in campaign, he could not be sworn in. He cannot hold office under the 14th Amendment. So he could run, but he can't be elected. And so that means he's not qualified to be on the ballot. It, it just seems like so many complicated um, rules that apply here. And certainly it's interesting to note that you can run if you're convicted of a felony, but you cannot vote. Uh, that is an, in certain states, like you pointed out in yes. Florida, that is yeah. a, a very interesting um, sort of contradiction almost to, yes. to consider. Uh, finally, I wanted to ask you, because you're talking about voting, we've certainly heard from other Republican candidates that, you know, the voters should be able to decide who can be on the ballot and who cannot be uh, when it comes to the primaries and when it comes to him being the Republican nominee. So how do you think voters will be reacting to this. He is the front runner at this stage and really has maintained that position for a long time now. So uh, let me clarify one thing about the Florida law. If you have served your sentence and paid back all your fines, then you can vote in Florida. But obviously he will not have time to serve a sentence if he is convicted. And he's not convicted yet, so he's not barred right now. Um, in terms of the argument that the citizens should decide? Well, the citizens can't decide that a 29-year-old can be president. The Constitution says you have to be 35. That just isn't a waivable qualification. So I would say that in the same way they cannot decide that someone who has committed insurrection can run for office. Politically, I would have a different answer. Yes, it would be better for the people to oust Donald Trump at the ballot box. But on the other hand, I believe we have to enforce all of our laws and rules. And this is a rule that needs to be enforced. So yes, he cannot be um, on the ballot. I, I think that that is clear. I think the Supreme Court is going to have to act really quickly because on January 5th, the Secretary of State of Colorado has to uh, prepare the ballots. And so she needs a decision in time to do that. Um, and they have a history of, in one day, they decided, U.S. v. Gore, uh, saying that the election, that Gore lost the election to um, W. Bush. Um, so they can act quickly, and they must in this case. It is of national consequence, and it could affect other states if they say that the 14th Amendment bars him from running for office, from holding office then it would apply everywhere. So it's not just affecting Colorado, it would affect the national election. And hopefully it's decided in time for even the voters in Iowa to have a say on who they would select among those who are qualified for office. And there are plenty of other candidates on the Republican primary who are qualified. So I think that it would be important for them to act quickly. No question, a lot of ripple effects and potentially a very yeah. busy holiday season for the U.S. Supreme Court. Thanks for this, Jill. That is Jill Winebanks, and she's a former assistant Watergate special prosecutor and an MSNBC legal analyst.